so I've been at home, you know, bored, got nothing else better to do than photographing or shooting toy cars. And I'm going to show you how I actually shot and edited this one in Photoshop right after the intro. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and welcome to another exciting tutorial. Now, if you haven't done that yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos similar to this one. So now before we actually dive into the walkthrough or the edit, let me show you how it was actually shot. All right, so let me pull out this folder and show you the actual setup. Now, this is quite a similar setup. I actually moved the light just a tad and moved it to the side so I get like a side light to the car since I'll be shooting from up above. Now I really didn't want to remove the base of the car because it really looked cool and I just didn't want to ruin it. But I also knew when shooting this with the base is going to reflect some of that color to the car. So it's gonna create that um, red color cast that we're going to remove afterwards. And while we're at it, let me walk you through the lighting setup that I've actually used in this shot. And what you see over here is the Godox AD400 mounted on top of the lovely Manfrotto light stand. And since I wanted a really soft light, I've mounted this um, Octabox that doesn't look like a box. Now I'm going to leave links to all of these items in the description below, so make sure to check it out. Now before jumping into Photoshop, let me tell you about our sponsors, Skillshare. So it's 2020, and if you are curious like me and you want to learn a lot of things such as photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, Python, web development, analytics, and marketing, then Skillshare is right for you. Now we all know how one busy can get, whether it's work, family, or friends. We tend to get very, very busy and forget about our goals. Now Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth with short classes that fit your busy routine. I recently enrolled in 3D isometric design class to learn more about creating these shapes in Adobe Illustrator in less than two hours. Now Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. The annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Now here are the exciting news. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get two free months of premium membership. This way you can explore and enjoy your creativity. All right, so now that we are in Photoshop, let me walk you through the actual edit. Now, obviously, this is what I have selected to work with. And uh, like I said, the light source was coming down here and I selected this because I just really liked the uh, overall lighting of the car. And uh, there are a few key issues over here that we are going to solve. Like I said, there is a color cast that we want to remove. And I just didn't like how this is very strong in the face and um, it was going to be very challenging to remove this, but I'm going to show you how I actually uh, came around this in a bit. I did cut the car out and had it on a different separate layer. Let me just turn this off. And I used Camera Raw to bring down the exposure. If you notice, let me just disable this. This was slightly overexposed and I used Camera Raw um, to bring down the exposure. Now you wouldn't see the exposure down over here. That's because I didn't use smart filters, but I did bring down the exposure just a tad. And then I did bring down the blacks and uh, added a bit of clarity after converting this to smart filters. All right, so this is what I've done here. And let me close this one down and let me enable this background layer so we actually see what is happening. So I noticed that the sides were a bit overexposed to my lighting. I created a curves with a um, mask and I dimmed down the sides. And like I said, there was this color cast that I wanted to get rid of and I created a hue and saturation adjustments and I targeted the reds over here, dropped on the saturation and brushed in the mask. And as you can see, I was able to remove the color cast from the photo. Now, I don't know if you see this, but if I zoom in, you will see these dust particles that were really uh, bothering me, although I knew it, that wouldn't show on Instagram. Uh, but, and if I enable this, you will see that I was able to remove uh, the majority of this 
dust particles and I use the healing brush tool to get this. Also, um, I've used a check layer to actually show me where these dust particles at and uh, you can tell that I left few but I wasn't bothered with these ones because these were too obvious for me. Now I still thought that you know the sides were too bright and I wanted to darken them so I created a new layer set it to darken and sampled uh, uh, the color from the side from the dark side over here and brushed over them and and if you see this is the before this is the after I was able to tone it down further now this is funny because um, you can see there is a, a bit of stuff going on down at this side of the car and that's because I kind of broke the side mirror and I tried gluing it back and kind of uh, disaster happened over here so I did paint on top of it and um, just try to uh, you know hide this as much as I can now if the car or the light source was over here and it was shot evenly I could have just copied this side and applied it to this side all right so moving onward and this is kind of related to this one let me enable this layer over here and disable the mask and uh, this is another shot that I actually took and put the opacity at 100% all right, so this was shot to actually remove the glare that was on the windshield. And I was actually holding the flash or the octabox in one hand and the other one was shooting. And that was very hard to do. But thank God I had the camera on a tripod and I was able to grab this shot. And if we go back to 71% and enable the uh, mask, then you will see that I have just selected uh, the windscreen and if I move it around there you go you can see it and I tried actually to uh, warp it to match the perspective because the camera just moved a bit and um, the other thing is I didn't like how this line was showing I think it just distracted the eye and I actually uh, black painted that with the pen tool so I traced around it with a pen tool and I sampled the color from this area and painted around the car now the reason why I added it at 71% because at 100% it just looked a bit different the lighting doesn't match and so at 71% I was able to bring that glare down and minimize uh, that annoying uh, reflection now I really liked how the car looked overall but I just wanted to darken this side more and so I added a gradient over here and I added a mask to uh, remove the darkening of that gradient from this part of the car because if the light source was coming from, from the top up above this area over here would be lit a little bit more and I did use the blend if to remove that from actual bright highlights and let's not forget about the shadow let me enable this the shadow was a straightforward one I just traced around this with the pen tool kind of straight lines and I just was aiming for the flat overall look this was a very experimental shot and I didn't know that I was actually doing a video but I thought I'd share with you some of the tips um, I've actually applied here and uh, hope you find this beneficial all right let's start with the lighting effects and let's start with the one in the back um, I'll enable this group and uh, what these are actually are blank layers I had a very big soft brush I sampled this color set the blending mode to screen I actually um, du duplicated that just to intensify the effect originally I had a red light going through the back but I thought let's use a complementary color just to break that look and um, I kind of liked how that looks like and then on top of it I added a smoke using uh, the smoke brush now if you want to know more about the brush that I used I'll leave a link in the description below this is a video in which I explain 
uh, how I use the smoke brush in Photoshop and uh, you can download that um, from there. All right, so we're done from this bit and let's move to the front light. And this is where things got tricky. And like I said, it was very experimental. Now I started with this base layer. And let me show you how this was done. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill it with uh, black. Come on. And I'm going to filter and it was render lens flare. Now I selected the 105 prime, I believe so, and clicked OK. And of course I changed this to screen and now I can, you know, control the size of this, the rotation and, and so on forth. And I added it to the front light, just like that. Let me delete this. And then I of course duplicated it for the other side. So I have two layers, one for the right side, one for the left. And um, the entire opacity of that group is about 80%. And then I moved to the front light and I made a selection with the pen tool. Let me just show you quickly. You can use the pen tool or you can use whatever tool that you think is appropriate. And it was something like this. I make a selection, 0.5, and then let's just create a new curve. And from that, it created a mask for us. And if I turn this up, there you go. You have kind of a light and uh, you can blur this out with a Gaussian blur just to ease things out. So it doesn't look very fake like so. Click OK and you're done. And uh, I believe that I've duplicated these two, created two of, of each. So this and this is for the same side like so. So I've used two for each side and uh, you can see uh, one is stronger than the other. Like I said, I was just experimenting a few things. And then on top of that group, I created a mask and tried to mask out the light as it goes, because I wouldn't want it to spread towards the end, but I wanted it to fade out at some point. Now, next, I wanted to add some smoke effect. And as you can tell, and you can see that I had that right there. So the way I drew this is I actually had two separate layers and each one of them I used the smoke brush tool and I brushed in smoke all over the place and then went back here and made a selection around the light. It was actually longer or taller than this. You can you can refine the selection and make it taller, longer uh, as you wish and then masked these smoke layers in and you can see I've controlled the opacity as well. Now to make it more realistic, I used this mask and I used the brush, which is the, the smoke brush itself. Made it smaller. Of course, I played with the brush setting to make it more dynamic, depending on the movement of the pen. And I started brushing things in and out on the side with a very low flow or opacity. And I did the same thing over here just to add some realism to that layer. Now towards the end, I thought, you know what, let's just add a dodge layer. So this is the before, this is the after. I don't know if you see it. I just dodged a bit of the car here and there just to bring the highlights up. I don't want to burn because I kind of liked how the blacks were in this photo or the shadows in this photo. Now I did do some experimental uh, things. Like for example, this is the uh, background and I added a blue layer on top of it just to add a bit of blue. This blending mode is set to color and brought it all the way down to 4%. You might not see it here in the, in the video, but it just added a bit of blue tint to the background. In addition to, you know, you can do things like this or like that and it's totally up to you. Anyway, I'll be supplying this RAW file. So make sure to actually subscribe to the newsletter so you don't miss out on that actual row file. All right, YouTube. So I know that this is quite a mess. Like I said, this was very experimental. I was trying things out. I added layers here and there, up and down, moved things left and right. And uh, I ended up with this photo, but I thought I'd share the thought process of shooting this because a lot of you 
uh, replied to this story when I posted this and wanted to know more about how this was constructed. And so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Now, if you have any questions, like always, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter, subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you on the 